Welcome to the Off Pitch Podcast, where we show you the alternative sides of football by sharing stories and skills from all players of the pitch. Okay, welcome to another episode at the Off Pitch Podcast, and today's guest is PWG or Philip Warren Gerson. Yep, Gerson? that's yes. me. That is me. Welcome. Thank you. And for those of you guys that don't know who Philip is, he's a football freestyler just like me. And um, you have been freestyling for quite a lot of wow. time. 16 years. 16 year. years. Yeah. And uh, you're still competing. Yep. You have been in the scene for a long time and uh, is known in the community as a person that spread joy and... Um, you know, meeting up with every kind of freestyler, always having freestylers over and a really good community guy caring about the freestyle scene um, and uh, not so much into viral stuff or putting on a Spider-Man costume. Well, I mean, if I have to, I will, but uh, I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just a short introduction, like what have you done competition-wise or what are you most proud of as a freestyler? I think what you mentioned is what I'm most proud of as a freestyler. Being able to grow the community, being able to be some sort of advocate for freestyle, uh, both uh, in the country that I live in, Sweden, but also the country that I'm from, the Philippines. But also online, being able to uh, do tutorials through Unisport and being able to inspire people to start freestyling. Um, and compared to that, all of the, the titles and competition, just f they feel minuscule in comparison but obviously competitions means a lot to me personally i know what you mean it's like i i always say that one of the best moments in my freestyle career was the first time landing patv or triple around the world outside of my uh, parents apartment and not necessarily the the titles you have won but we still need to know what you have done and accomplished um, yeah, for people don't, that don't competition know. Competition-wise, I'm a two-time Asian champion. I have been in five Asian finals. I have been in the top 16 every year, apart from two years uh, in uh, the World Championships uh, since 2009. And um, I have been... And also competing every year since 2009, right? Yes. yes. Uh, so every the only person, I think. Every Super Bowl since 2009, I've been competing at. And I've also been to every World Tour stop, every World Masters stop. I've been eliminated and, you know, gone back into the World Masters scene the same year. Um, so I've been competing quite a lot. I've been to a lot of... I've been traveling quite a lot with freestyle as well. Um, but yeah, that's me as a, comp a competitor and also other competitions because i feel like you people always focus on battles but i also want to hear the uh, like you ha you're the world champion in show flow as well yes uh once or twice i think i've won show flow but i've been on the podium every time there has been show flow i think yeah um latest one was last year 2021 i got second place obviously after erland um again again <laughs> I've also um, been second place after Ireland. Yeah, many I mean, times. I mean, being being second place after Ireland is just like winning uh, these days. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> that's <the> true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> He's in another league. Uh, but yeah, I like uh, 2021. I also got um, fourth place in Super Bowl. I got top 16 in Red Bull Street Style. 2020, I got fourth place in Red Bull Street Style and third place in Super Bowl. So even though I'm pushing, you know, old age, I'm 30. By the way, for those who who are wondering, um, I'm still trying to push my level, still trying to be the best freestyler that I can be, and uh, I still co think that competing is, you know, somewhat enjoyable. And that's actually one of the things I want to get into with with you, Philip, is um, um, the the joy that you have for freestyle after so many years and. I still love freestyle and we have spoke about this many times before and we actually also recorded another um, podcast. Um, you were the for first one I, I recorded the podcast with, but it's uh, it hasn't been published. I wanted to do it again here in this yeah, environment. It's better. But that's what I want to talk to you about. So we want today we want to cover uh, creativity within freestyle football and also how to stay motivated and being able to train for many hours. Not that 
it's always necessary to keep on training for you know uh, a long um, long period or uh, have a long session all the time. But that's one of the things that is the most inspiring with you, I think, is that you can keep on for such a long time and you always come up with new stuff and it looks like you have a lot of fun. And that's the joy that I remember starting uh, out with freestyle or that I had in the beginning. I could keep on for hours and I didn't want to stop. But it seems like you still got I that. I still have that. It, it feels like I'm, I'm, I'm just getting started with freestyle. And uh, it depends on how your how your look on freestyle is and what you want to accomplish with freestyle. If you want to become the best in the world, then you you just want to win a title. Then I don't think that you know exploring your creativity and and stuff like that is is necessary um, because you just have to follow a recipe. Okay, so what has the world champion of twenty twenty one done? Okay, I'll do that, but different. You know. But the way I find joy is to be able to find new tricks, new combinations that has never been done before, being able to inspire like not only people to get started with freestyle, but also inspire freestylers to, to explore what they can do. So the reason why I can be able to freestyle for, for hours on end is because I find something and I want to land it. So for example, today we recorded a video. I taught you a trick, you taught me a trick. And I think we recorded, I think we trained for like two hours ish. And I barely landed the trick I did, but I was happy. That kick of adrenaline that I got after landing a like trick half assed after two hours, that's the high, that's the adrenaline rush that I want to yeah. chase. And, and just like you said, you're chasing something. It's, uh, it's uh, of course, it's, you know, it's different when you practice with someone i feel like it's easier to to keep on going for a longer time but when i'm practicing myself uh, for example in in inside here uh, if it's cold i don't have a specific goal for that session it it feels more like i'm just getting the session in to get you know moving and also just to touch the ball and then i can maybe have a session for 20 30 minutes and then i'm you know just tired of freestyling i'm not tired uh, of physically physically but no. but i'm just like i don't want to do this anymore but today just like you said i feel that joy again when i'm i'm chasing one trick and we were freestyling for over 2 hours and it's just one trick you know i don't get tired at all but it's just that you know rush of landing something new and it seems like that's something you keep on doing every yeah session. i mean for me it's therapy yeah it's like oh you're having a bad day okay then go out to you know to the street, go to your gym or your training spot and and try something new, and then push you know get out of your comfort zone and push something that you'd never landed before. Do something that you never tried, and when you land that, you get that adrenaline adrenaline blah, 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 adrenaline rush, um, which you chased when you first started with freestyle, and I think that's the important part that. A lot of people, they train for four or five years and then they quit because they don't have that same passion as they had when they started. And I think that's a problem because you you, you need to keep evolving all the time. You, you need to, you know, keep becoming better. But for example, like you, you have the world record in alt Mitch no touch, for example, um, which is an insane record of 32, right? So you've, you've pushed that to such an extent that when you lose the your ability to do 32 and you can't push to 33 anymore and you're stuck at let's say well, stuck uh at 16 17 and you feel like my goal is so far away then you might just lose motivation you know for freestyle in general but the good thing is there that okay there are other tricks that i can do that you've never landed before and that's what you should chase to keep that um, motivation up and keep that joy yeah. and passion up. I, I think that that's that's a beautiful thing about freestyle. There's so many tricks and you will never run out of tricks. No. But uh, as a um, lower freestyler, if you can say, um, you know, I, I got that rush from pushing. And also just for me, freestyle was always I need to get my pulse up, get really tired. So... When I then, you know, my, my level um, declined a bit and then I was going back into lowers, 
I didn't get the same rush, like you said, because I, I, you know, suddenly had problems landing, you know, tricks or combinations that I wouldn't be happy with just after two, three years of freestyle even. And that's that then it gets demotivate uh, de- demotivating yeah but uh lately or the last couple of years i've been doing a lot more uh, acrobatic moves and i've got that joy back from trying to land new combinations or new tricks but also today i got reminded uh when i was trying the the spinning rap and and just a trick that i never you know, have been practicing instead of just standing there doing basic tricks and s- tricks I've already made. I think a lot of freestylers would um, get a, a lot of benefit from from just at least every session I'm going to try a new trick. You don't always have to land it, but it's just that, you know, drive and, and motivation to land something new. And that's the beautiful thing about freestyle because it's very, very clear when you land something new. Compared yeah, to football I mean, and other I mean, sports, you there is a clear line when you've landed something, and when you cross that line is when you get that adrenaline rush, and that's what we want to chase, right? That <gasps> I landed it, and especially if you have one hour and forty-five minutes of frustrating attempts, and then you finally land it, and it looks good, it feels good, and then you're like, "This is great." Yeah. And then you know, as a lower freestyler, maybe you can't chase that as much. But when you think about it, if you landed a new trick, okay, try it weak foot. If you're a, if yeah. you're a new freestyler, try it weak foot. Um, obviously, maybe if you landed alt palais first time, m- your first thought is maybe not, you know, try it weak foot. But you know, try different things, and it's always good to um, to just broaden your horizon, have many tricks under your uh, arsenal. Um, and I think that we kind of need to go back. Uh, from the the battle centric and the competition centric mindset of freestylers, and go back into why we started in the first place. Totally agree. Just just a couple of guys uh, standing outside their parents' apartment, uh, doing tricks with a ball. Like doesn't matter what time of day or year it was. You go out there in t-shirt and shorts, and you just train, and you just push that level. You chase that rush. Um, and I mean, yeah, sure, we are older now. Uh, we we have jobs, we have responsibility uh, of other things than just going out kicking a ball. But I think that it's for me, it's more even more important now than it was when I started, because now that I have responsibilities, I have bills to pay, and I have work to do. That's when I need this rush and the chase, because it's like therapy. You 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 want that you know uh, break yeah. from for, from your regular life. And then going out to freestyle and still being able to push that level and get new tricks to in, that's the best feeling in the world. And that is why I'm able to do that for three, four hours because, you know, who doesn't want to be in that dream world? True. No, I think a lot of freestylers also get that uh, reality check or when they get older, they feel like, you know, using my time now to try to land a trick or a combination doesn't give me any income money uh it's kind of like a waste of time in a way or they feel feel that way Uh, economically uh, financially a a big waste of time i've not felt that just because it's actually my job but then also you start realizing that if i land this new trick that won't get me another performance Uh, but it's also the same when i'm doing design work for for freestyle developing gear i can sit down draw a lot of stuff and i know that i'm just going to throw it away but it wasn't, even though I, I'm throwing away a lot of drawings, I need that uh, to be able to get to the final product. So Yeah, it's a journey. It's a journey to yeah. where you, what your design will be in the future. But yeah. you, you can't just get to the end. But also, like you said, it's it's not only that. I also have started to look at that for me as therapy or time off to not think about everything else and worry. I'm just drawing, having fun. Uh, and then the end result can be really good, but it can also be bad, but it was still a good time in that moment. And I think that's also yeah. what you're saying. And it, should, and, it, and it shouldn't matter at that point either because you're using it as therapy. So the result shouldn't matter at all. If you look at it in hindsight and you're like, that's pretty good, then it's a win. If, it, if you look back at it and it's, it's shit, then you're like, yeah, but at least I spent my time doing what I like. True. True. Um, okay, can, can we get to some uh, some tips? Um, like, what what would you say for freestylers that are looking to be more? 
I don't want to say creative, but you know, it, learn new tricks, uh, widen their horizon, and and just become a more all-round freestyler or more open-minded. Okay, so there are like for me, there are so many things you need to think about. Uh, one of the most important things is that you, first of all, you should think outside the box. You should think outside your comfort zone. But that is such a cliche thing to say. But yeah, it, and it's it, also like what you mean with that. Yeah, I mean, so if you're a lower freestyler, uh, try out uh, side body tricks. If you are a side body trick freestyler, try out lower tricks. You know, stuff like that. It's simple. But also, you can also use your own limitations to your advantage. So let's say you you have, you know, a certain amount of tricks. Then you can use those certain amount of tricks to create combinations and moves that hasn't been done before. Because just like a deck of cards, you have 52 cards, and if you shuffle them, there are like infinite amounts of of um, combinations in which the cards are stacked, right? But there are more than 52 tricks in the world. A lot more. So if you do something, you know, just take three, four tricks and combine them in whatever way you can, there is a big chance that that has never been done before. But, you know, a uh, you know the Esteban transition or the Pixie transition to uh, to Nextall, that has been done before. Or, uh, you know, m- multiple rollers in a row, that has been done before. Alt-Mitch, Alt-Mitch. It has been done before, but there are so many ways and so many combinations of tricks that you just have to think about and you just have to do it. So, for example, on top of my head, cross opposite Timo to uh, Clipper 360 opposite Abbas with weak foot has probably never ever in the history of football freestyle been done before, but who's going to do it? And uh, Yeah, but... That's that's the thing, and like like you said, you only need three, four tricks, and you can make like endless of of combinations. Yeah. And instead instead of thinking about you know oh I have to uh, come up with my own tricks because that's really really hard, and especially if you w- need to you know land multiple tricks to combine them, you can just use the tricks that is already uh, there and ex- uh, already exists, yeah. and then combine them and create your own style and become unique because you don't need to create your own trick to become unique no and it's I more th- about the combination I also think that that is like um, uh, one of those um, how would you say false uh, facts about creativity is that you have to figure out how to make and create a brand new move to be able to be creative but just because you're creating a brand new move doesn't mean the trick looks good uh, you can create a, like a brand new move, never been done before, but it looks like shit. Then it doesn't matter if it's new or creative; it still looks like shit. So you also have to think about the aesthetics of the trick. So and, and same thing goes with with a new combination. If it's new but it doesn't look good, then it's you know it still doesn't look good. So you have to think about that part as well. That don't create just for the sake of creating, but create because. You know, the idea is there, the execution is there, and it's a cool-looking trick. Yeah, totally agree. Can can you also take us through a regular session? If you have a session f- by yourself and you're mm-hmm. not with anybody else, how do you go about it? Have you, you know, scheduled stuff? Ha- have you already, you know, pre-decided what you're going to train for that day? Or do you take it as it come? Like, take us through the process of you... Uh, of a day or of your regular day with a training session so usually when i go to training well first of all this is pr- pretty new to me i just moved about a new apartment which is further away from the training spot that i have um so i'm i'm about three kilometers away so i actually walk to my training um, about a 20 25 minute walk and which means that when I arrive, I'm, you know, pretty warm. I'm, I'm, you know, I've moved my body quite a bit. So I don't need as much warm up. Um, I go there with almost no idea of what I'm going to do today. But I start with, with um, I start by doing clippers, just clippers, because it's the thing that, uh, it's weird actually, that it's the trick that requires the least amount of warm up for me. Uh, which is one of those tricks that probably needs most warm-up for other people. And then I do uppers, 
same there it doesn't require that much warm-up and then I do a little bit of basics uh, and after that I I've tried out most stuff that you know uh, this works uh, this doesn't work and then usually I go with um, training a little bit of lowers maybe 15 minutes 20 minutes of lowers and then I go straight into like transitions and trying out new combinations with transitions and and uh, sit downs. Okay, so, but if you feel really good uh, lowers wise that day, then I will finish. Then I will continue with lowers. Yeah, so, so, so it's more like you, you take it as it comes. So you yeah. are an open book, but then, uh, and that's the beautiful thing as well because you never really know what's going to happen that that day. You might feel really shitty and really bad. Okay, mm. then you can. But maybe these tricks are, you know, you feel good for certain tricks, but not others. And yeah, yeah f for example, two days ago, I had the the plan to go and train lowers and only lowers. So I did. Um, I wasn't because usually it, it depends on how much time I have. If I have all the time in the world to train, then I can I, s I can stay there for for four hours. But if I know that I only have one hours of training time, then I'll train lowers because it is the most exhausting and I kind of need the lowers. So two days ago, I didn't have much training time. So I had like one and a half hour. So I went full on lowers. And then yesterday, I also I only had one and a half hours. So I decided I'm going to go lowers again. And both of those sessions were incredibly good. I landed stuff that I've never landed before. And I pushed my level in a way that I wasn't really sure that I could push at age 30. But if I have four or five hours, I can spend, you know, I can bring food to my training session and be like spending 25% of my training just thinking. I I'll be sitting, you know, just looking bl blindly into space and be like, what if I do this into this? And then I try it and then I was like, ah, that doesn't look good. And I find like all these combinations in my head. I land something, I film it, I, I review it, I analyze it. How can I do it better? and stuff like that and sometimes I just film it and realize huh this might be one of those things that I will put in my end of year video so or this is something that I might use in a competition so I save that and you know it's not only about how the body works but it's also about how my mind works so yeah, so your, your, your session is not only, like you said, about just doing the tricks. You're no. actually there creating, having kind of a... It's almost like a job where you're having a brainstorming session yeah. with people, but with yourself thinking about it. Then you actually try it out, and then you have the camera, which is really great a great tool, because then you can look back at it. Maybe the trick is looking much different than you thought, mm -hmm. or the combination, and that can give you ideas. So you're kind of like using the camera as a... Um, partner to, to yeah, help you. because w but you also have to be self-critical. If you if you film if you have an idea and you think it's a great idea in theory, and you film it and you and you look at it, and if you're if you're constantly happy with everything you do, there is something wrong because you have to be self-critical of what you do. So, for example, if you if you absolutely have to, you know. Uh, upload a combo on Instagram and say and ask people, is this clean? Then obviously the answer is no, yeah. because you have to you had to ask the question. So if you look at yourself in the camera, if you landed a combo or a trick, um, ask yourself if this was someone else, would I have thought that this was clean? And if the answer is no, delete it and do it again. And that is, f in my opinion, how easy it is to you know be self-critical. You shouldn't be too self-critical, but you should be looking at it from a an outside perspective so that you're able to, to become better. Because, you know, there's so many freestylers that just neglect, you know, the execution, this maybe the style or, um, or just the basics. And also they, they don't realize that in the future you will become a better freestyler, meaning... Yeah you will actually land this and it will look much better in the future. So don't rush it. You don't have to publish it right away. If you take one more week, two more weeks, and then you can uh, perfect it yeah, or make it better. It. And then when you actually put it out there, it looks so much cleaner, so much better. And people are going to be much more impressed instead of, of course, you, you should also show people uh, your the progress. The, yeah, your progress and your, your, the process of landing a trick. But... Um, 
like Philip said, if you feel like it's not that clean, it's not looking perfect, at least be honest about it, and then people can follow your your progress. And that's okay. Bringing me back into the academy, just mm-hmm. to to take you guys into that. That that's what the Off Pitch Academy platform and app is all about. You should share those moments where you're not landing stuff for the community and others to to join you on your journey and to see how you're doing. And it's also fun to look back when like, oh, I, at this point I couldn't land this trick. And now two years later, it's it looks really good and you can go into your analytics and stuff like that. But yeah, that's a, that's a valuable point. Be honest about yourself and try to look at it through somebody else's uh, view or, or eyes. Yeah, and I mean, it's your journey. And it's your choice to 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 share your journey with other people or not. Um, I have always, you know, because we're old school freestylers, we've always been, you know, make longer videos, uh, YouTube videos, make show only the results. But nowadays, people want to be, you know, fed with content all the time. So I think that maybe showing those fails or showing when it's not going that great or show when you've landed a trick that you're not super happy with, but you still landed it, maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. It's It might be the new generation, you that, know? But th- that's what I love about Philip's YouTube channel. And if you guys haven't checked it out, check out the uh, descriptions and uh, the show notes because there you get to see, for example, he just published, or at least now when we're talking, uh, best trick of 2021. And that's a yearly thing he have, like the b- best trick video. And it's insane to see the tricks he's doing. And it's so, you know, motivating. And, you know, you get shocked every time he's landing a new trick. He also shows, you know, some fails there. But on his channel, you can also see videos where he's only attempting, just like the video we filmed today, where you've seen almost only fails. And Mm -hmm. it's 99% fail. And then maybe you actually land something. Barely. Yeah, but not always. But it's it's fun to follow the process and, and see people struggling and actually see the process of learning a trick. Yeah, because a lot of people think that we are superhumans because we are uploading like uh, impossible tricks or crazy tricks. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that we are going through the same struggles that every other freestylers are. Like, you know, being very, very close to landing a combo or a trick. Being, v- you know, being not super happy about how it looks so you delete the clip or something like that but in the end we only show the end result but we are struggling just as much as any other you know and in that video that we shot today we'll show that that we are struggling like yeah. and, and i mean and you don't always get to see that on social media so that's that's it's cool that you are showing that on your channel because people then you know, they can recognize uh, themselves and they see how much effort and work it is behind just landing one trick, not becoming great at it and landing it every time, but just landing it once. Yeah, I mean, all of the, the best tricks uh, series, m- like almost all of the, the clips in those six videos, I've only landed once and I will probably never land again. For example, the ender of best of 2021. That one is insane. There is no chance in hell that I will ever land that trick again. And people ask me, why? Well, <laughs> it, it's because it took me four hours to land. Um, Imagine doing that in competition. Yeah. And I mean... That would take so much time to just be- become so good that you can do it on stage. Exactly. That. And the thing is that people ask me all the time, I was like, why, why don't you... I've, I've seen that clip from, from the best of 2019. Why don't you do that in a competition? You would win instantly. Yeah, sure, I would if I land it. Yeah. But it also took me several hours and I you only have one and a half minute on stage in a battle. So there's no way that I can spend four hours trying, you know, to land that specific move. And if I'm going to, you know become super consistent at that specific move, then all of the other aspects of freestyle will, you know, just die out because I've been training only that specific move for that long. That's the thing. And and that's why I also see a big difference in in type of freestylers because some freestylers uh, are really good on stage. And like you said, they have rehearsed, you know, a set and they have practiced those tricks for such a long time. So they almost never fail. But then you have other freestylers that are only focusing on landing new tricks and new variations. And when you actually meet them and you, you see them live, you might get disappointed because they, they can't really land that many tricks because they're only focusing on that the chase of landing a new yeah. trick. 
and they also have, have the combination like you and many others and and the beautiful thing about having uh, the variety of tricks is that on stage as well even though the ball goes a little bit too much to the right or to the left you have a trick or a way of uh, catching uh, the ball and and you know just in the moment creating a new combo but yeah you have a lot of different type of freestylers freestylers that are landing tricks just uh, different tricks all the time and then people that are just really good at those few tricks that they can and the, the sets that they have been practicing yeah and as you said that is the beauty of freestyle that there are you know everyone can choose their own path and journey within freestyle if you want to become world champion and you want to chase that goal go ahead if you just want to train because you think that pushing your own limit in lowers is fun do it if you only want to create brand new moves do it like i mean it's called freestyle for a reason you can do whatever the <laughs> you want you know yeah. There is there is there is no limit. You 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 just do you. Totally agree. Okay, so we we should start wrapping up. But before that, hey, hey. do you have any uh, again any tips for freestylers that want to be more creative? So w- you know what should I do for the next session or give them some tips? Okay, so I'm actually going to share a secret that I've uh, been wor- been doing since 2007. Uh, this works for a new beginner freestyler uh, and pro freestylers. It works perfectly either way. So you make a list of all of the tricks that you can do, and you put them in a pile, or you you, you make a list. Let's say you have uh, 175 tricks, and you close your eyes, and you point, and you get that trick. And then you close your eyes, and you point, and you get another trick. And then you, So you choose three tricks. And... Uh, you see how many combinations you can do with those three tricks. And I, I have a series called Three Trick Trial where I do exactly that. But in the early days, all I did was, okay, what can I do with the crossover, hop the world, and around the world? These are just three tricks, but you can combine them in so many ways. you know. And as a new freestyler, um, if you ask yourself... I've landed these combos. What do I do next? Okay, then take these three three tricks, combine them in every way you can. And like in every different, you know, in you do the hop the world first, you do the around the world first, you do a, a no touch, etc., etc. And then all of a sudden you might have like 100 combinations with just three tricks. That's the thing. I, I think this will really open people's mind and especially beginner freestylers because not that they are complaining, but many people think that, oh, I need to land a new trick because I can only do, like you said, around the world, hop the world or crossover. Maybe the three l- uh, least creative tricks yeah. in a way or people look at them as really not creative because they're so basic and fundamental. But then when you look into the combination you can make with only these t- three tricks will open your mind uh, and, and make you realize that there is endless of possibilities yeah, there's and so if you much. just add one more trick then and then if you do this every session i think it will really um de- uh, make you develop as a freestyler yeah and i think i think it's important to think that even as a as a pro freestyler or advanced or even intermediate freestylers that that uh, you can do this with the alt mitch and tuzani and stuff like that as well just have that variety and be able to to create new combos out of tricks you already know Um, And a last note, actually. Um, Don't be afraid to use simple tricks. You know, um, there is a beauty in simplicity when it comes to creativity. I love using crossovers, for example. There are so many many things you can do with crossovers. um, But people are afraid to use it because it's so such a simple trick. You look at people like Kazane who is using yeah. crossover in such an amazing way and he ma- he's, he makes it look so difficult because it is difficult because he's combining crossover with you know all these crazy ass shit that he's doing and he's making his own moves and his own tricks with just a crossover and the way he's executing yeah. the crossover like as you, well he's doing what we called uh, what I call non trick tricks it's basically when you're doing a movement that has nothing to do with the movement of the ball but like, for example, just spreading your leg, like you're doing crossover, you spread your legs and cross your legs and then do a crossover again. That is a non-trick trick. Uh, it's very f- common in sit-downs, but it's not very common in, in lowers. But 
the simplicity of that is just beautiful. And I think that uh, we should be able to embrace the simplicity of tricks more. Totally agree. I think that was a great way of ending this episode. And uh, b- before we end, make sure you check out Philip's channels. We will link Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and, and all the other channels so you can check it out, especially his YouTube channel. You should definitely check it out if you want to learn uh, and be- become more creative or just look at freestyle maybe in a different way or you need some motivation. I think that uh, Philip's channel is probably the best one to go to. And Thank also, you. yeah, and also make sure you check out the Off Pitch Academy platform. So uh, it's totally free. You can track all your sessions. You can learn from other free sellers and look how into how they are training, see their fails, and not only the uh, the the perfect shot on Instagram and other other places. You can also check out the Academy videos and programs if you want to learn. Uh, and with that, I think we will end this episode and hopefully Philip will be back and we can talk, get more in depth into into creativity or, or if you guys have any suggestions, what do you want to hear from Philip, let us know down in the, in the comments. And uh, yeah, thanks again, Philip. Thanks for having me. And uh, see you guys in the next episode. Skål.